Okay, so good evening, everyone. Today I'll be giving a presentation on the Caribbean islands. This is by Kiera Joel, that is who is speaking. Um, and this is also for International Class uh, 285, Section 502. Okay, so let's get started. So first, I want to talk a little bit about culinary history. Um, basically, there were two tribes from South America, one named Arawaks and one named Caribs. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this was around the year 600 AD. And basically, when they arrived, they found a whole bunch of new foods and animals that they never inhabited before. Fish such as snapper, grouper, shrimp, um, a native animal, the wild hog, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, some tropical fruits and vegetables like guava, pineapple, cashews, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, and um, papaya. Okay, a little bit more culinary history. So I know we all know about Christopher Columbus who sailed the seas, yada, yada, yada. So as he was doing this, he discovered some islands in the Caribbean in 1490 and he claimed the land for Spain. Um, as he was doing this, he found multiple spices, including cinnamon, nutmeg, mace, allspice, cloves, uh, cloves, I'm sorry, coriander, and um, we have peppercorn. About, let's say, 70 years later, the Spanish brought over more animals because this was now their land they were taking over. They brought pigs, cattle, goat, and from the pigs, they brought lard, which is a cooking fat that they use, um, which we use today. We don't use lard that often. We use different oils, vegetable oils, peanut oil, uh, canola oil, etc. They brought over different fruits and vegetables and herbs um, like bananas, plantains, coconuts, ginger, sugarcane, mangoes, and citrus fruit. Um, they brought over a lot of different things. Um, they bought figs, grapes, uh, terraminate, dates, chickpeas, eggplants, onions, garlic, oregano, and cumin, some things that we use today, actually. Um, they also brought the, the idea or thought of preserving meat, uh, basically by salting and drying them. And the Caribbean natives adopted these techniques because they basically had no choice but to. Um, at this time, the Spaniards, they, when they took over, they made the original uh, South Americans, the Arawaks and the Caribs, their slaves. So they were forced into these new traditions, these new customs. So um, some more culinary history where this talks more, more about Cuba. We're focusing more on Cuba now, um, more specific. And so Cuba was founded by Christopher Columbus again, and this was in 1492. And basically, uh, Cuba is something new for them. So Cuba inhabits new crops. They have black beans and corn, something that they didn't find on other islands where they still have cassava, sweet potatoes, and stuff like that. But black beans and corn was something new that they didn't know was around at the time. Um, at this time, basically, uh, slavery was abolished. And so when slavery was abolished, they had to then import other people over to work for them. But those people were also slaves as well. These are the African slaves from Africa. And when they came over, they brought plantain, taro, okra, and et cetera, when slavery was abolished. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead to the next slide. A little bit more culinary history, talking about Trinidad. Uh, so Columbus, again, <laughs> Columbus found Trinidad in 1498. And then you have Tobago, which I never heard of 
too much. I knew there was Tobago, but I didn't really know too much about Tobago. And now I know something new. Um, Tobago contained more new tropical fruits. I talked about how every time they find an island, you know, there's more things that they're finding that the Caribbean withholds. So uh, more tropical fruits such as grapes, grapefruit, oranges, mango, cocoa, um, these fruits thrive here. Um, basically, over the years, you have Spain, Britain, France, Denmark, and the Netherlands fight over power of the islands, which is crazy. There was so much war going on at the time, I can only imagine. Uh, at this time, every, I want to say, country that came over, they brought more customs and more traditions and so you have the dutch who had adam cheese and split pea soup and that actually stuck with the caribbeans it's something that they still do today um then you have the british breadfruit which is resembling to what we now know as the jamaican beef patty which is it's like a, a direct descendant of the cornish pasties that was served throughout the british isles so that's a fun fact right there. Um, a little bit more culinary history. It's a lot to learn. So in the 19th century, where remember I talked about the abolishing, the abolishment of slavery. When this happened, the Spaniards basically had to start cheap labor. Uh, when cheap labor, at that time it was very common. So Indians, Asians, um, Chinese, they all came over. And like I said before, when people came, they brought their customs, beliefs, traditions with them. So when Indians came, they brought curries, uh, pilafs, chutneys, and more uh, spices. And when Asians came over, they brought chopped soy, stir fries, sweet and sour dishes. And let's not forget, they brought rice. Um, so now we can talk about some cooking methods, which I like to talk about because there's so many different ways to cook different types of food, which makes it never ending when it comes to learning how to make something in different ways. So here we have, we have frying, we have the frying method. This was introduced by the Spanish using vegetable oil. And I talked about before lard from the pigs. Um, they also did saute. Uh, then you have deep frying as well, which is also under the frying. Deep frying comes from the Africans. When the African slaves were brought over, they brought deep frying over with them. Um, so things, some foods that were fried were fish, seafood, meats, vegetables, and fruits because fruits can be fried in, in the dell. Remember, there's fritters. So then we have braising, which is my favorite because braising is basically like it's one pot cookery, which also comes from Africa. It's a method of extending a small amount of meat into a full meal. Uh, the long, slow braising tenderizes tough cuts of meat. So those, those meats, those cuts of meats that come from the animal, those are the ones that are exercised the most by the animal. And so they're harder to cook down to uh, make them not as tough anymore, make them tender. And that's what braising does. You put some vegetables and meats inside of a braising pan. And at the time, probably a pot for them. You just throw it in the oven and they probably cooked it over fire at the time. And you let it slow cook over time. Over time, it becomes very tender. Um, then you have preservation, which is introduced by the Indians. Um, they smoked meats, they sawed, salted fish, and they salted meat, which allowed meats actually to last longer um, because the slaves at the time couldn't eat any of the fresh meat. So that's how they made their meats last longer. Um, and they were still fresh for them and they wouldn't get sick. Then you have grilling. Um, grilling, we do that a lot in America. Um, that's something big we share. Um, the way they grilled things were, um, well, let's first say that they were brought over by the Arawaks um, when they first came over. Some examples 
uh, would be jerk chicken, um, anything grilled. So the way they did it was they would coat it with a seasoning or they would marinate it and they would let it sit and then they would grill it. And we have some proteins. Um, we have swordfish. They ate conch. They ate goat. But let's remember that back then, they also ate whatever they found because they ate whatever resources they found in the land, whatever they could eat. Whereas now we're picky and we're more modern. We have technology, etc. So um, they they had tuna. They had shrimp. They had beef. Dolphin, crab, marlin, wild hogs, group of pigs, snappers, um, chicken, and makir. That's one that I haven't heard of. So I will be looking that up to get a better explanation of what that is. It sounds interesting. Um, some food that's still around today. There's way more than this, but just a general sum. You have goat stew, Montserrat. Kalaloo, which Kalaloo is actually a soup made of greens and other ingredients. But when I made it, I know I made it for our week in Caribbean week at school. And um, to me, it was just like a creamy spinach, not too thick, but a cream of spinach soup. You also have the pepper pot, which is a vegetable soup prepared with any available meat and vegetables at the time. So like I said before, whatever was around in the land is what they ate. So whatever vegetables was around or meat that was around, you just put it in the pot, give it some type of liquid, and there's your pepper pot soup. You have sofrito, which, um, you know, is a Latin American type of food. Sofrito is a mixture of sauteed green bell peppers, onion, garlic, and tomatoes. And basically, they use that for flavor for many dishes. And that's more so in Cuba. You have beef patties and jerk chicken, which is in Jamaica more so, and red beans and rice. Um, nowadays, you do have Americans who are very influenced by this cuisine. The reason why I say that is because if you look around, we have Jamaican restaurants everywhere. We have Cuban restaurants everywhere. And who's in there primarily eating? Americans, because we like to taste different foods. We we love other foods but our own. <laughs> but so that's what that is. Um, that's how Americans are influenced by this cuisine. And those are my references. And I also sent you... A word document of my references because the hyperlink would not pop up for these so I sent the link in the word document and that's also where uh, I have a menu uploaded for you a link to the menu and um, I did use potoon um, and so yeah just in conclusion you know uh, I'm actually from the Caribbean and so you would think I would know so much about the Caribbean but Truth is, I think I only knew what was on the surface. Um, just doing the research on this, it's crazy because you have what we think is one cuisine, Caribbean cuisine, is actually about five different cultures coming together. And I just think that's amazing.